The 2021 basketball season is here. Teams around the country took the offseason to retool and revamp and are ready to hit the court. DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app, has rolled out another one of their can't-miss offers. Try DraftKings Sportsbook. It's easy. So what are you waiting for? Get in on all the action now. To celebrate the return of basketball, DraftKings Sportsbook is giving new players 100 to 1 odds on any featured matchup this week. That's right. All you have to do is bet $1 on any featured matchup this week, and if your team wins, you cash in on a crisp $100. While we are all excited for the return of basketball, let's not forget football's playoffs are right around the corner. So head to the app now to check out all of DraftKings' daily odds boost. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable, making it easy for you to deposit and withdraw your money at your convenience. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code FIELD68 when you sign up to get 100 to 1 odds on any featured matchup this week. That's FIELD68 for new players to get a shot at 100 to 1 odds on any featured matchup this week. For a limited time only, at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older in New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Or in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. What's good, Illini Nation? Hey, we're coming off a huge win from Duke, but it's your man in the middle, Deion Thomas. And hey, as I always told you, I bring you nothing but the best on Champagne All Nights. And tonight, you might look, think of this and look at it as a little bit different because tonight's guest wasn't one of the big names on the flying Illini team. Wasn't one of the guys that if you pulled him up, you'd be like, dang, he scored a lot of points. But what this young man has done over his career, not on the hardwood, but out there on the golf course, has been absolutely amazing. Tonight, we have Mr. Mark Steinberg. Mark, what's up, baby? Great to be here, D. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me. It's always good to see you're, uh, you're, you're always smiling. That's one of the things I love about you. Well, I appreciate that, brother, because crying just ain't in my portfolio. So I better keep smiling. <laughs> so Good, man. thank you for coming on, man. I really appreciate you taking the time. I know how busy your days are. You know, you're like, the, you're like James Brown of golf, bro. The hardest <laughs> working man in this industry. Always time for fellow Illini. You know that. My man. So we talked that you, you know, we, we were just discussing before we hopped on air, your time with the 89 flying the line, I team. Now I was on, of course, I've had Steve Bardo on, I had Kendall Gill on. What's it like to have to defend those guys in practice, man? <laughs> no fun. <laughs> it is. It was, uh, I, I, I tell you that that was, uh, so I, uh, 89 was my senior year, uh, and I decided to try and walk on that year. I had some health issues. My knees were no good. My back was no good. So tried to walk on my senior year, played a lot of intramural ball, and, and some friends talked me into it and uh, fortunately made the team. And uh, uh, that team was true. I don't have to tell you. That, dream, it, that team was truly remarkable. Um, the athleticism of that team, our, our point guard could play center and our center could play point guard. Um, and we were just impossible to defend. That was, you know, you, you hear so much and, 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 and you know how much of a, of a sports fan I am, basketball in particular, that team defined positionless players. And, uh, and it was just, it was, it was remarkable. And watching them in practice and watching Kendall and Nick and Kenny in particular, who were just so damn athletic, um, uh, the, the, you know, the two hours every single day was just played above the, well, they had, they were playing it above the rim. I certainly was not, but it was, uh, it was remarkable. And, um, and they were very close uh, and, um, and they had a lot of fun together. We had a lot of fun together. They, they treated us as walk-ons uh, absolutely great. 
Uh, in fact, funny story. Um, I, I watch every Illinois game as, as you can imagine, basketball and, and football. I've gotten close with, with Josh Whitman. I've gotten close with coach Underwood, of course, Mike small, who does an amazing job with golf program. I've been close with him forever. So I was watching, uh, I was watching Illinois play. It was either game one or game two this year. We beat somebody. We were beating somebody by 50, and Bardo was doing the game. And Bardo and I have been friends for a very long time, and we actually lived together on the road every once in a while when we would travel. And um, so he was reminiscing as he needed to try and find some filler time because we were up by 50. And he kept talking about the 89 team, and he kept talking about Lowell, and he kept talking about you know, Marcus, and he kept talking about Kenny and Kendall, and he got Irvin in there. I think he got PJ Bowman in there. Wow. So I texted him during the break, and I'm like, Steve, what is going on? I mean, with how close you and I are, you can't even <laughs> remember my name. And sure enough, during after the next break, he comes on. He's like, and I forgot Mark Steinberg. So it was <laughs> actually a fun little, fun little story that Steve and I had just about 10 days ago. Oh, no, that's great, man. And you mentioned this, you, as you said, we are such a tight knit group. And, and I, I think a lot of that comes from, of course, the blood and sweat that you share on the basketball court. And it just does nothing, you know, but make you a band of brothers. And you, you, you talked about how you guys spent the time together, you became uh, uh, really tight. And I'll tell you this, and I've said this many a time, People talk about me being the all-time leading scorer and things of that nature, and, and it's great because I, I I don't get there without my teammates, in particular Steve Roth. Steve Roth, like you, was the one that was the walk-on. He had to defend me every day, and I, I would just so beat up on on Steve Roth every day. He was bigger than me, a lot bigger than me actually. Steve yep. was about a good six ten, six eleven weighed more than I did. And, you know, but he made me, he made me a better player. So I, I know how I respected the walk-ons and managers. I know how, of course, that 89 team did. did you, and, and it's good to know that you felt that respect. Yeah. And even now you went through this that year with them. What was a high point in that year for you? I know that, of course, the Final Four and those things, but was there a point during the season that for you in particular felt like a high point? Beating George Tech on Super Bowl Sunday for the second time. We had beaten them in, I believe, Maui that year at the uh, Maui Invitational, uh, and they were loaded. I think that was the year that they had triple threat. Uh, and, uh, and then we played them, I believe it was Super Bowl Sunday as a play in into the, into the Super Bowl that day, uh, in an overtime game. And it was just, uh, it was just phenomenal, um, going down to LSU with Chris Jackson and beating them by 30. And they just, they didn't even, we blew the doors off them in the first five minutes. They had no idea w what hit them. And the two Michigan games, mostly because I just can't stand Michigan. Um, you know, I think, you know, you, you can only go to Illinois if you truly can't stand Michigan. Um, but, you know, and especially since they did what they did to us, 83-81 in the semis, um, to just blow the doors off them uh, mm -hmm. in Chrysler Arena the last game of the year. Uh, Glenn Rice Senior Day, Romeo Robinson, that whole just um, – you could tell it was a special team and, and people don't realize big 10 was loaded, right? Like, I mean, big 10 was loaded, even though Michigan was a five seed that ended up winning the, the NCAA tournament. I mean, Iowa had Roy Marble and BJ and Ed Horton and, and uh, Indiana with Jay Edwards and Wisconsin with Trent Jackson and Danny Jones. And it just, it goes on and on the big 10 and look, big 10's loaded again this year, but mm -hmm. it was truly loaded. And to go and try and win on the road, Purdue was loaded. Like to go and win on the road was just brutal. And uh, you could tell, you could tell early on, this was a special, special team. Yeah. And that's one of the things I love about the big 10 and we are, we, we, we get a little, they downplay us sometimes in the media, but the Big Ten is almost always the perennial conference in NCAA Agreed. basketball. Agreed. You know, we, the bad part is we end up beating up on each other, so I we know. get those lower seeds instead of the higher seeds where, you know, you go to the ACC or something like that, you have the, your top two or three teams that are, yeah. are really worth it, and everybody else after that is, you know, 
kind of the whooping boys because that's what the big the, the ones at the top do to them. But the Big Ten is always deep. Yeah. And, and it just consistently every year is the same way. With you being there, of course, there's a lot that you've done in your career now. What can you or what did you take from the the Lou Henson's? And I because I know Lou got on you as well as he did everybody, because Lou oh, got yeah. on everybody. Yep. But those battles with those guys on a daily basis, what did you see? What did you learn? What was some of those things that you took from uh, that, those practices, those training sessions, the weightlifting sessions and all those things that you hold um, that's key to you today and that has helped you in your success? Hard work. It didn't matter if it was me, a, a, a meaningless walk on, meaningless to the rest of the world um, or or Kendall Gill or Kenny Battle or Nick Anderson or Stephen Bardo, like everybody was treated the same. And if you screwed up, everybody ran. If you screwed up, everybody did push-ups and sit-ups. Like it, 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 it just didn't matter. And um, and it was good. It was good to be. It was good to feel that way, right? Because that meant that you felt like you belonged. And um, and I appreciated Coach Henson. It was obviously a, a devastating loss to to the Illini family this uh, earlier this year. Um, and, uh, you know, and we all uh, love and, and, and miss coach. Um, but the whole staff was great, you know, Nagy and, you know, his kid was a grad assistant then and Combs. And, um, it was, uh, it, it was, it, it was a, it was a great, you said it, we, we are a tight knit community. Um, and, uh, you know, back then a lot, a lot of people came like you from the greater Chicago area. Um, you know, I, I played, you know, I grew up and played in Peoria and, um, and, and, you know, then we started to, to expand quite a bit uh, on a, a more national scene. But those who go to Illinois, and I'm lucky, um, I think at one of the games I saw you recently, I, uh, or before pandemic, uh, I got two kids there now. So um, we're carrying on the tradition there. And uh, I just, I really appreciate the, the Illini bond that, that, that I feel and, and others feel. I just got off a business call, uh, D, about two hours ago somebody that needed my advice on something but never met him before. Um, he's an entrepreneur uh, living out in California. And sure enough, uh, he did a little research on me and he's a fellow Illini as well. It just, <clears throat> it's great to feel that bond. Yes, it, it really is, man. And thank you again <laughs> for, for coming on here and joining my me. Pleasure. You know, you talk about that expansion. One of the great things about that 89 Illini team and what Coach Nagy, Coach Coombs, and Coach Collins did when they were recruiting, everyone was from the state of Illinois. You know, what – so these are guys that you grew up watching, grew up playing with, okay. grew, up, grew up playing uh, with and as well as against. How did that feel knowing that, you know, everyone had such state pride? Yeah, I mean, I should, never should leave out Coach Collins because he was the cog to 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 just the amazing recruiting of 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 of, of what we were able to uh, accomplish, and then what he did over at USC. So, um, yeah, it felt like um, you know, it, it felt like you were you were playing in a you know in an Illinois All Star game every single day, um, mm -hmm. and and you know I, I obviously you know the, you're the leading scorer for a reason for the hard work the determination and you didn't you you could have let up but you didn't it was just great to see everybody push one another and it was great to see if 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 you know Kenny Battle was our our jokester of the team and if he was sloughing off too much. Uh, Nick was a little bit of our enforcer. Nick would make sure he would know to get Kenny back in line. And, uh, you know, Kendall was kind of the quiet assassin and, you know, Steve was the scholar. And um, so, uh, you know, it was just, it was cool from all the way down in, you know, Southern Illinois, down in Carbondale, where you had, you know, Larry and, 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 and Steve uh, to, to, to Lowell's unbelievable uh, career in, in, you know, in Chicago and Kendall just south of there. I mean, Nick in the city. It was just, it was a who's who of yeah. um, the best of the best in Illinois basketball. So and with all of that, and I'm, I'm with you, loved it. And that was one of the things that has really made our uh, university what it is, is those standards. So with those standards, Mark, you, 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 you play at Illinois, you're a senior, you graduate from the University of Illinois. And I like to say this, and I like to put this point out there because we, we'll have a lot of people listening um, that are U of I grads or either they're fans. 
and we'll have some that are even supporters like yourself. What did and how your, your, your U of I degree, your time on the U of I campus, how has that helped you as you've moved on into what you're doing now? Well, it was it was good enough for me where I stayed for seven years. I, um, I, uh, I, I, I finished my undergraduate studies, went, uh, went straight, uh, went, uh, stayed on campus and, and went to three years of law school. Um, uh, look, y- you know, I, I wouldn't, I live in New York now, right. Um, you know, been fortunate to have a, a reasonably successful business career for the last 29 years after I left campus. Um, you don't hear of many young kids going to University of Illinois from the New York area, right? Uh, that's how passionate I feel about University of Illinois, about the student body, about the faculty, about alumni like you, who I'm more than happy to come on and talk to about the people I played with that I still stay in touch with. My two older kids, and I have a, a third who's in eighth grade, he'll end up there too, I have no doubt. You know, that's where they wanted to go. They see just how passionate I, I am about it. My family is about it. And so it meant a great deal to me. It means a great deal to me. I told you all the people I still stay in touch with. Um, I support the university with my time. I support the university financially. That's, uh, that's very, very important to me. And I, I just, I think there's something, you know, growing up in Illinois, living in Cleveland, Ohio for 20 years, now being in New York for 10 years, there's just something about Midwest people. There's something about Midwest work ethic. There's something about just born and bred in the Midwest that is hard to put into words unless you've lived it. Um, I wouldn't trade it for anything in this world. Yeah, I I agree with you 100%. Of course, I'm a little biased because I am a Midwesterner. (laughs) I know. And so the University of Illinois you graduate from Illinois, you go on to IMG. Mm-hmm. What made you want to get, first of all, what made you want to get into the field of representing players? Because I, I tried that man, for about a year. It's hard. Hey, that's not an easy yeah. job, big dog. Yeah. 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 <laughs> athletes, yeah. Are, well, athletes are big babies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you're a very, very big one. I could tell you that. So uh, more of a giant. The Yeah, look. I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I've been, like I said, I've been doing this 29 years. All professions are tough. I I, I know that you, you, you know, you just, you're not going to coast through life, you know, being in the, in the, in the sports management slash marketing business, like I have been for so long, it it's, and I know most businesses are, it's highly, highly competitive because, on the outside, it's very sexy, right? Um, on the inside, you can appreciate because you, you've been an athlete at the highest level. It's a lot of grunt work. Um, mm-hmm. And you got to make sure that you're willing to put in your time and that no task is uh, beneath you. Um, I'm still doing things now 30 years into my job that I was doing as an intern 30 years ago. Uh, and you just, you, you have to understand nothing is ever beneath you. And um, and so, um I wanted to, to answer, you know, to answer specifically your, your question, D, I, I, um, I knew I wanted to stay involved in sports. My, you know, we were a sports family growing up. It was just mom, dad, myself, and my sister. And, um, you know, my dad's no longer with us, but he, he taught me everything I knew about sports. We would, um, you know, growing up in Peoria, Illinois, I never missed a Bradley basketball game. Literally, I never missed a Bradley basketball wow. game until I went to until I went to school at University of Illinois. Um, I would go to every home game and I would listen to every away game on the radio with my dad. I mean, that's how passionate I was. So I knew I was going to stay involved in sports. Obviously, from what we've talked about, I certainly wasn't good enough to pursue a professional basketball career on the on the court. So. Um, I just wanted to stay involved. And, and I tell young people who ask me all the time now, what does that mean? There's so many different avenues you can get into when it comes to sports. Now I happen to go the agency route um, and plugged and, and, and put in my time, but um, I wanted to do something I was passionate about and something that I knew I would love rather than a job that felt like a job. And I was getting up begrudgingly for every day. Yeah, I'm glad you said that, because that's actually one of the things uh, before I moved into the new position that I'm in now in development. 
I spent a lot of time in the inner city in Chicago, in my hometown. And I would talk to a lot of the kids and, you know, you, you know how it is. You're talking to kids and they're like, yeah, I'm going to the NBA. Yeah, I'm going to the NFL. Yes. And I used to always tell them, I'm like, all right, first of all, understand. And I was talking to this one kid, a quick story about him. And had, I'm talking to him and I'm like, yeah, I'm like, well, what position do you play? He was like, yeah, I play power forward. And I'm like, you play power forward. I'm like, oh, okay. I say, well, do you start on your high school team? No, no, I don't start on my high school team. I'm like the sixth man. I say, okay. I say, what about AAU? Do you play AAU with any of the teams? No, I haven't played AAU basketball just yet, but I'm going to the NBA. I said, let me ask you another question. He was like, yes, sir. I say, how many five, nine power forwards have you seen in the NBA? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And he was like, and you could see this look on his face come. And I was like, I, I'm not trying to crush your dream. I was like, but the chances of you making it to the NBA really are slim and none. There's not a lot of people that do the Anthony Davis and sprout, you know, eight right. inches, you know, right. overnight in two summers. It just right. it doesn't happen. But you, what, what you said is exactly what I told him. I was like, recognize there's a lot of avenues to be in the sports world that does not depend on you playing. Oh, right. so maybe you need to give those things some thoughts and some ideas. And, you know, I walked away and, and I, I could see the kid's mind working. Now, unfortunately, I haven't seen them since. And with everything <laughs> and the way things are crazy in Chicago, I hope yeah. he goes one of those avenues and, and not the other way. So it's great to hear you say that. Coming from a basketball background, how'd you end up in golf? Yeah, you know, again, I I wanted to get involved in sports, and I and I didn't. F- I feel like what you were saying, but you know, you didn't want to crush this young five nine person's dream. But but at the same time, you know, one of the things that my wife and I try to teach our three kids is let be, you know work hard, be realistic, like be realistic. My my son, my son who's a freshman at Illinois, he's he's good AAU player. He's good high school player. Was two time captain of the varsity team four-year player on the varsity team. He was good. Mm-hmm. He was also 5'11", six foot, and, you know, 150 pounds soaking wet. Um, so, uh, you know, when, when, when thinking about colleges, I said, your ceiling is either going and enjoying a D1 school like I do and maybe walking on one day or thinking D3. You got, you, you got no other you're – not, you're not going to play D1 or D2. You, you got D3 maybe – and, and you, you know, enjoy or enjoy college and maybe walk on when you're a sophomore, junior, senior, whatever it is. So teaching realism to young people these days is not the easiest um, task because um, it's not a trait that comes easy to them. Um, so I, I, I was, you know, after graduating law school, I had to make a decision, take the law job that was going to pay me significantly more or take the, um, the, the, the sports agency job that was going to pay me significantly less, but something that I was pretty passionate in. And that's what I decided. And when I took the job at IMG in 1992, um, the job that they had was in golf and it was in women's golf and it was recruiting and representing women golfers. I did not know much about either, didn't know much about the sport, did not know much about, about the specifics of women's golf, but I thought it was doing something that I could be passionate about and I was going to work as hard as I could and let my path take me where it did. And 30 years later, I feel very fortunate that I, I actually made a hard decision to take love over money. Well, I, I'll tell you this, you, you did a heck of a job at IMG. Thanks. It was, no. it was a fun training ground. K- Carrie Webb ain't no pushover. No, no, she Anna was, uh, said ain't no pushover. Yeah, no, no. You, you, <laughs> you, you and I have talked before. You've done your you've done your homework. It was no, you know, I am G and look, I'm very fortunate. I, I own a company here in New York um, with a couple of my business partners and 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 we're we're having the time of our life. I'm I'm enjoying my job today more than I ever have, and that's something after twenty nine years and fifty three years of age. Um but I, I could never complain about IMG as a training ground back in the day. It, it brought me to where I am today. I left at the proper time in 2010, 11, and, 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 and here now. Well, you're actually doing a great job. Tell a little bit about the, the, the move to Excel 
and bringing in because you you represent some top guys. I'm gonna tell you, you actually yeah. represent one of my top, my best, my best, my favorite golfers. I, I am a Justin Rose fan, He's and awesome. I wish I, I I wish my game was like his. <laughs> well, it's not. <laughs> I'm working on it though, Mark. Yeah. Tell about that move, and then of course bringing in Tiger or signing Tiger at such a young age. Yeah, I mean, you were what? I think around. 30, 31 or somewhere up in there? Yeah, probably 30, 30. I've been with him for 22 years now. That's right. Yeah, and at uh, that time, he was the man. That's that's, yeah. that's a that's an oddity for someone that's that high to go with such a young person. We um look, IMG back in the day, we 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 were we were the who's who in, in athlete representation and sports marketing, founded by basically the pioneer of the industry and Mark McCormick and I was lucky to, to get a to, to to get a job there and 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 stay there for twenty years and parlay it into uh, you know what I was able to do and where I am now. Um, so very very fortunate. I get that. Um, but I decided uh, about ten years ago that um, I my time at IMG had run its course and um, it was time for me to go do something and 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 own something on my own. Um, and I, I thought I had built up enough equity in myself and my reputation. Um, and um, I had stayed in touch with a couple uh, buddies who were uh, who are now my partners who were um, um, at IMG with me back in 92. And we just kind of stayed in touch throughout the years. Uh, and one of them, Jeff Schwartz, had started a business, a company called Excel, where, where he represents represented and still represents uh, some of the best basketball players in the world. He's, he's arguably the top basketball agent. Uh, Casey Close uh, joined as well three months prior to me. He's the top agent in baseball. And then I came in uh, and brought my, my golf expertise and some of the business to business expertise that I have. We started a consulting business and a properties business. And so we now have a pretty robust business with, you know, close to a hundred employees and um, uh, loving what we do. But um, look back 20 some years ago, uh, I'd love to tell you some sexy, incredible story about tiger. I got lucky and, and, and yeah, I, I've, I've, I've maintained the relationship, maintained the business. He's one of my closer friends. Um, and we've, we've been through a lot together, ups and downs. I love him like a brother. Um, he was signed to IMG, uh, right out of Stanford. He had a bump in the road with his agent after about a year and said, I'm either going to stay with IMG or I'm going to leave IMG. You better introduce me to somebody that I feel like I can I can travel the long road with here. He and I hit it off, and here we are 22 years later. And he came with me to, to Excel, which I was very fortunate uh, of. He was the only uh, client that I could bring to Excel, a good one. And I've just built my uh, the golf practice here since with, you know, um, the, the top golf agency in the business. Well, you know how it is. It, it goes right place, right time, right opportunity, right person. You had prepared yourself. I mean, with, you know, the, the, the practices at Illinois, the being jumped on by coach Henson, the being elbowed by Kendall and Nick and all of those other guys to what you had learned and taken away from Illinois to the schooling and uh, the, all the hard work you put in at IMG. So you were, you were ready for Tiger. And then this is when you two came together and, and were able to form this. Big fella, you, you, you've done your thing, man. If there was one thing, and, and I like to, to kind of touch on lessons of life and things that we take with us to kind of make us who we are and prepare us for that. Outside of the hard work, which you mentioned, then everybody, you know, has this, okay, work hard, work hard, but then there's work smart. What's something else that you would say, hey, well, you know, it got to be this, this, and this, and these are the things that you do in order to get to where you want to be? Uh, I, you know, I, I, I was, uh, I'll never forget the first time Tiger and I were going to meet and, and talk about, you know, him and I being a team together. And he was like, look, man. People tell me what I want to hear all the time. Like, just shoot it straight with me. Be honest. And so what I've, I've learned over the time is you, you need to tell people, even if they're the greatest athletes in the world, even if they're intimidating, you need to tell them what they need to hear and not what they want to hear. And I feel like so many times in our society, there's so many yes men and yes women out there. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, I, and I feel like, you know, 
if you want to command and demand respect, you need to be who you are and tell people how you feel and not be worried about the ramifications that um, that that may hold um, going forward. And so it sounds simple. Um, it's actually a bit harder to do than 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 it sounds. Uh, but I try not to overcomplicate things, to be perfectly honest. I, my kids will tell you I'm pretty straight with them. Uh, they'll know they'll know if they screw up. Uh, and um, and yeah, it's and also just enjoy what you do. Like I still love my job, and fortunately, I had that fork in the road in 1992. Law job, low paying sports job, and I you know I I took the fork in the road that might have put me in some financial distress back at the time, but at least I was getting up every day and doing what I wanted. And again, just because you, 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 you say you want to be in this certain profession, there are so many alternatives within that profession. I'm just not saying sports, I, you know, you could medicine, whatever it may, there are so many different avenues. If you just open your mind to, to the directions that you can go. Well, that's, that's a great decision. That's great lessons for life. You know, you talked about being open and honest with people and, and you're right. Sometimes that's more difficult than that, but that was one of the things. And, and I remember my mother and my grandmother used to, used to always tell my brothers and I this. She was like, you tell people the truth. She was like, two things are going to happen. She was like, and they're both good for you. She was like, one, They'll get upset and they'll never talk to you again. She's like, and you got off cheap because you got bad people out of your life. She's right. like, or two, you will form a friendship that will last forever. And that's the thing that's more important. So it's great to hear you say, shoot, shoot it straight to people. Because I yep. think that's what people need to hear. It's not always what they want to hear. That's right. And I remember I cut off a few agents during my um, interviews with agents when I was coming out of Illinois because I, I knew I was a pretty good player, but man, they were hyping that thing up so much. I would have thought I was Michael Jordan or something. I'm like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> are you trying to, you know, give me the okie doke as, as we used to say in the hood? I was like, that don't, you know, I know reality. So it, yeah. it's great to hear you, you know, mention those things as, as being catalysts of one of who you are and how you handle your business. Um, so it, it's great to hear with that. Knowing how big of a fan you are, got to be excited about last night's win over Duke. Yeah, yeah, yeah I am. Um, whole family watched it. Uh, both the <clears throat> both of the kids from Illinois are, are home for an extended break. Got home around Thanksgiving and home till the middle of January. Um, so it was a whole family affair. Uh, you know, we got off to such a good start those first three games. Although OU gave us. A, a, a very good game. And actually, I don't think people realize how tough of an out OU is going to be this year. Um, they, they, they have talent across the board. Um, having said that, you know, those, I don't have to tell you as the stud you were, you, you know, those are games, those are battle tested games you need to, and especially early in the year. Um, Baylor was good. We hung with them for a half, but I think coach Underwood would tell you that we didn't, neither team played well in the first half and it was just lucky to be a low scoring game. And, and then they just they put it on us a little bit the second half. So I thought last night was was important to go on the road, even though you know it, it was a, 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 a it wasn't the the typical Cameron crazies. Um, we're still at Duke. It wasn't in champ, you know, cozy Champagne. And uh, to go up ten early, I think it was fourteen uh, four, and then literally never let that game even get close. Um, mm -hmm. Never got within ten. I just thought it showed. Um, I think it said a lot to the, to, to coach and to the players on the floor, like, all right, look, we don't have to read our hype. We are good. Uh, we got to play well, but we are good. And so, Hey, it was exciting. Uh, you know, we, we've had some down years, so it's not very often you can say we went into Cameron and we won by double figures and we controlled the game. Um, I thought we looked good across the board. I was a completely different player from how he's leading this team and, how he's getting to the basket. Um, uh, the freshman look great. Cabello's been phenomenal the past two games. Um, Georgie's really came, come on Kofi's Kofi. Um, you know, we got, you know, we're playing seven or eight guys and, and it's, um, 
it's fun. It's very interchangeable. Um, I'm sure coach got on a little bit about the turnovers. Um, maybe Kofi finished a little stronger, but, but we, we, we are, we are definitely for real and we're going to need to be, because as we talked about big 10 is tough as nails. You, you could, if you pick, there's, there's five teams from the big 10 that could go to realistically go to the final four. There he is. And this is what makes this year so exciting because of the depth of the big 10, which we already <laughs> talked about, but this Illinois team, and again, I know you know basketball, so this is a question I can ask you and we're going to be okay with it. Seeing where Coach Underwood started and what he started with to where he is now, what, what, tell me about what kind of job you think he's done Phenomenal. in this position. Phenomenal. He's just, and again, I've gotten to know him as the person, uh, been to practice, been to games. Um, you know, we, we, we talk to each other, we text one another, um, throughout the year, throughout the summer, whatever it may be, had dinner with him when I was back, dropped my kids off, um, at, at college in August, socially distant dinner, but we did have dinner outside. And, um, I just think he's a good man. He was the right man for the job. Good job by Josh Whitman to, to, to have the, you know, what's to, 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 to get him out of OSU at Oklahoma state after a year. Um, and he's just done a phenomenal job and <clears throat> talk about a guy who's going to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear coach on will do that. And, uh, but I just watching the players, you know, in a timeout or even when they're coming off the floor last night and how, you know, when coach takes them out to give them a breather, or just to talk to them, just to see them, you know, with their arm around coach and just the way they're reacting to him, mm -hmm. um, it just looks like and feels like a special group of players. Now, whether it turns into a special year or a special season or a special team, got to get lucky. Some things got to go your way, but it feels that way. And it feels like he has complete command and respect of that locker room. And that's, as you know, that's the first step. You can you have as much talent in the world. You don't respect the people that are teaching you, then you're done. Yeah, you, you're 100 percent right about that. And I love I love his relationship with the kids. I actually, you know, men's basketball posted a video and then I retweeted the video after the game. Josh took video from inside the locker room and you could see where coach came in and was really excited. And all of the guys are jumping around and then you see the relationship between he and Andre Cabello. And this is a freshman. As coach is walking through, you know, Andre Cabello kind of gives him one on the back of the head and coach is like really fired up and going. I was like, OK, just like you said, I was like, we're, we're, this team is special. This, yeah. this, this is not the same. Um, and no knock on Bruce, no knock nope. on John, but they just did not have that same connection with with the players and with the staff that this team does. So it's a great observation, uh, Mark. Now. I give a lot of credit. I'll tell you, DT. I, I also give give a lot of credit to Kofi and Io. Um, they they made a hard decision. They both put themselves uh, in the draft. They both took themselves out, um, and uh, and they both, uh, as as it's playing out, probably uh, did the absolute right thing. But that's not the easiest thing uh, to to recognize at the time that you're going through it. So, um, <clears throat> and they wouldn't have come back unless they respected coach and the, and the staff and, and the university. Very true. Very true. So I got one other, we got a game coming up this weekend. One oh, that yeah. you're familiar with, one that yeah. I'm familiar with. Well, Bragging the, rights. the Bragging rights, the border war. Tell us, give me a story from when you were there in 89 that will typify this, this rivalry. Uh, playing in St. Louis, being down by 18 and coming back to win the game. Uh, I mean, just ridiculous. Uh, it, it's it. this is the one game. At, I'm sure there'll be others, but this is the one game where fans are missed all the time. It, I, I miss them as much as you do. And, you know, I, I'm now in a business where where we miss the fans on a daily basis. But this one playing in St. Louis and this year we're going to be in Columbia because we lost a coin flip. But um, <laughs> but it, the, the the walking into that arena and literally seeing it split 50 50 yes. orange and black and gold is 
it, it's you're at a bowl game, you're at a national championship game. It's just it if that does if you're if you're a part if you're just a fan of sport if that doesn't get you going it it is just something else and so that'll be missed but um, yeah it's special meaning in my family because my sister and brother in law both went to Mizzou so I am very much hoping for a serious beatdown on Saturday night. Um, that's what I want. <laughs> well, you, you and me both, brother. And it's, I don't think people understand. I know nationally they don't get that, that to me, this rivalry, this game is as big as the tobacco roll rivalry. Yeah. It's as big, if not bigger than a, uh, 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 Purdue and Indiana game. I mean, this is a huge and serious rivalry. Yeah. I remember talking to the guys when they came in, Io and those guys their freshman year, and I was like, y'all got to understand how big this game is. It didn't register for them, you know. So your brother-in-law and, and, and sister-in-law, have, and they, they've had the upper hand the last two years because I don't think our guys understood. They I understand know now. they understand now. No, and, for, for sure. Yeah. And, and that's for what I'm looking forward to uh, come this weekend is, is them – really putting it on them. I'm with yeah. you. I want to see a blowout. Personally. I do too. I do too. I, we, yeah, you know, and nobody better than coach Coach isn't going to let them get ahead of themselves and, and mm-hmm. celebrate Duke all the way into Saturday. Like it's a, uh, it's a big game. And I think one of the reasons why it's not recognized nationally as big of a game is because it's always played in December, right? Like sure. we don't get a chance to play them, um, you know, uh, end of February, beginning of March, you know, like Duke and Carolina get to do to possibly settle who wins the ACC regular season or who, you know, who wins the ACC tournament title. Um, you and I know this is important, not just for bragging rights. Shit, it's important for recruiting as well, right? Yeah. Like you don't yeah. want to lose to Mizzou and so, and they don't want to lose to us. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's an important game and, um, we uh, we'll we'll remember what went on the last couple of years. It, it I I feel good about I feel good about Saturday night. Uh, you and me both. I think this this is definitely the best team we've had in a very long time, and has yeah. has the potential has the potential to be the best ever. We'll see how this thing turns out. And, and as I said that to Steve and and the Kendall, and I told him I'm biased. You know I'm biased. I am an '89 fan. If it wasn't for the '89 <laughs> flying the line, I. Maybe I'm not at Illinois. I know, but they were there, and I was there to to witness it. And and unfortunately, wasn't re- wasn't able to play with the guys that stayed around. And that was part of the conversation that Kendall and Steve and I had as well. I don't know if you've had a chance to check out the podcast, but you should listen to their two interviews. They, they were both great. What well, conversations? Yep. I hate the word interview when we're doing this. This, <laughs> is fun. this ain't no interview. Sounds like a job. <laughs> this is fun. This, this, this is fun. I could do this for hours with you, DT. Well, I'm not going to keep you for hours because I know you're busy. But I do have to ask this. As a golf fan, um, can you help me with my golf game? No, that's not, <laughs> that, that's not what I was going to ask. You're asking the wrong guy. <laughs> give, give me a, a, a story, of course, one that you can share. I ain't going to ever be digging in nobody's business. But one that you can share from your experience of representing these guys that, that could be interesting for, for our fans to hear. I've had, you know, there's, uh, again, I've been fortunate, uh, you know, look, a lot of highs, a lot of lows. Um, yeah. uh, but, you know, a, a couple that stick out, um, you know, uh, golf being bought back into the Olympics in 2016 down in Rio for the first time in 104 years. And, um, you know, I was down there in Rio and I had the, the gold, I represented the gold uh, medalist in Justin Rose and the bronze medalist in Matt Kuchar and the, the person who finished fourth in Thomas Peters, who's a University of Illinois grad as well. So that was that was incredibly um, special. Um, Tiger, you know, the incredible comeback from everything he'd gone through coming back and winning the tour championship. And on that same day, Justin Rose winning the FedEx cup and having a picture. I'm in my office now looking at the two of them tigers masters win last year when nobody was thinking he would ever win another major Gary Woodland went in a U.S. open on father's day two years ago, last year. Um, It's been, it's been remarkable. And just seeing just the, 
the gratitude that the clients that I've been fortunate enough to represent have on their face when they're thanking me and my team for all that we've done to help them get there. That's, that's the ultimate satisfaction to know that we had a very small part in helping them, you know, achieve some of this crazy success. Well, you know, we're talking about success and we're talking about giving back. That charity event last golf season, oh, yeah. I, I watched it on TV. I love it. How, how did you pull that together, man? I mean, and how fun was it to walk out there with those guys? I know that has to be hilarious with all of the, the trash talking going back and forth. It was fun. There was a lot of smack going around. That, <laughs> that, was, that was craziness. You know, look. It, that was right in the right as COVID was starting. Um, well, right in the middle. Um, so it was kind of May, end of May, uh, and we raised twenty million dollars. All of it went to COVID relief. Twenty million dollars in one day. So, yeah, it was cool. And every, whenever you get Tiger and Tom Brady and Peyton Manning and and Mickelson together, it was it was pretty cool. We've done a couple other. Um, uh, 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 charity related uh events over the covid period so it's been it's been cool i've been I'm very fortunate to do some of the stuff i've been doing and uh um you know next on the list is uh saturday night at 7 p.m local time against mizzou yes sir well mark i'm not gonna hold you up man i catch we're on here long enough give a little shout out or something you want to give to a lion eye nation and to our listeners your choice you you your love, microphone, big dog. Love, love you all. Um, I might be here. Many of you, hopefully there's quite a bit of you listening. You probably have no idea who I was before this, but um, I am a line eye through and through. Uh, doesn't matter if I'm in New York at home or traveling across the world. I, uh, I follow it every step of the way. Uh, and I, um, I, I probably recruit as hard as anybody for people to do, uh, to attend this great university. So uh, shout out to, to everybody listening. Uh, stay healthy. Uh, crazy times. Hopefully uh, good times are ahead. So thanks for listening. And uh, you got a good one here in DT. He's a good friend. Hey, Mark, I appreciate you, brother. And thank you for joining us on Champagne on Ice. And hey, Illini Nation, grab some of those people that are just walking around and tell them to click on Spotify on Apple Podcasts and like and, su and su subscribe to Champagne on Ice on the field of 68 Media Network. And we're out of here.